Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. Now, telescope eyepieces uh, can be a little bit confusing uh, to the new astronomer. I mean, there's so many different types, and you know, what do all the numbers mean and the rest of it? Yeah, the best way we can, uh, I think the best way to follow along with this video is go and grab a couple of eyepieces. Uh, maybe you, you, you've got a couple nicking, a, a couple nicking around, <laughs> knocking around the place. So uh, go and grab an eyepiece, doesn't matter what it is. Because at the end of the day, an eyepiece, or eyepieces are pretty much all the same, but different. Now, that will make a perfect sense shortly, don't worry. Now, I'm assuming that you've got, uh, you're holding an eyepiece. Now, even if you haven't got an eyepiece, don't worry about it, um, because it's, it, all this information uh, will still be handy to know when you do get an eyepiece. So, now, what I want to talk about in this video is all the IP, all the common eyepieces that are provided with telescopes today. Now, like I said at the, at the beginning of the video, there is so many different types of eyepieces and they're all pretty much the same, but they do different things. A little bit like a car, I suppose, if this is the correct analogy. You know, all, all cars get you from A to B, you know, they're all pretty much the same, but they all perform and do different tasks. Uh, eyepiece are pretty similar to that. So, uh, what we're going to do first is have a look at what model or make uh, the eyepieces that you may have. And the easiest way of this, of uh, identifying this, because not all eyepieces tell you what they are, um, is to have a look and there's usually a letter on there. Now, the letters today, um, there used to be, I would say, three common letters. Um, and now these are the common letters. There is many abbreviations these days. Everything's SV or something. <laughs> uh, but if you just have a, have a look, if there's a letter. Now, there's more than likely, if there's a letter, it's going to be a K, maybe a K and an E, a capital E. Um, or it may have a H on it. Now, I wouldn't be, I'd be very surprised if you've got an R on it, which are Ramsden's, uh, which stands for the, and they're um, kind of obsolete these days. Now, what, what they are, those letters, is the K will stand for Kellner, and the H will stand for Hy Hygiene. Now, let's talk about the worst case scenario first. If you do or, look, or having looking at your eyepiece and it does have a capital H on it. Now, unfortunately, you've got in your hands uh, probably one of the worst eyepieces available today. And they really, really shouldn't be provided with modern telescopes. They were designed, and it's the same design that they used in telescopes hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Uh, you know, ancient telescopes when optics were poor, everything was poor basically in those days. And these eyepieces have somehow kept uh, alive even today. Now, you may say to yourself, well, why do they still provide them if they're that bad? Well, they're cheap to make basically and you'll very often find, in fact I've never come across a uh, Hyden, uh, um, uh, Hygen, sorry, that's, that's been all steel constructed, they've always been plastic. The, the toy eyepieces really and if you have got one of those in your hands the first thing to do is upgrade. Um, it's advice I always give to most eyepieces but especially with these H eyepieces as we'll call them um, and any of the eyepieces I, I do mention in this video will be a good alternative to I, I can't think of a better word than that garbage that you're holding in your hand now I don't want to sound like an equipment snob in, in any shape or form if they were good you know I, I don't mind plastic plastic's good a lot of things are made out of plastic but they're not good, they're terrible. They're gonna really give you terrible views. And uh, trust me, just just, up, uh, just buying, um, you know, any, like I say, any of these other eyepieces I'm going to mention uh, in, in a short while, it'll be like having a new telescope. It really will be that dramatic. So if you've got um, a Hygiene, please get rid and upgrade as quick as you can. So we've just looked at the Hygiene and the Kellner. Now those names just simply mean the lens element design. 
um, if you were open any IP, so I've got an IP here. Now this happens to be a uh, Kellner. Um, and that just simply means the design of the lenses. So I'll put a flash an image up now. So we've got the Hygien, which is a very, very simple uh, lens affair, as you can see. And then the Kellner is a little bit more sophisticated, as you can see. So the names just simply mean the design or, or, or the um, configuration of the lens elements in the eyepiece. That's all it means. Okay, so we've uh, talked about eyepieces that have a letter or may have a letter. Now your eyepiece may not have no letter on it at all. Or it may say something like this, Super 10 or Super 25. Um, now these are very common with Skywatcher telescopes. I don't know, I think there's another brand that does provide these supers. But they're very, very common and they're provided with, like I say, most Skywatcher telescopes. Um, now, the Super is just a fancy name for another fancy name, I suppose, which is what these are, Modified Acromats. Now, again, all that means is the design of the lens element inside the eyepiece. Another eyepiece that is sometimes provided uh, with uh, telescopes when you, when you buy them is a Plossel. Now these are my all time favourite type of eyepiece because they're budget friendly and they're a good all rounder. Um, so Plossel again is just the elements inside. This is why eyepieces get a little bit expensive. Well, they don't get a little bit expensive, they get a lot expensive. They go well into the three figures. And uh, we're not gonna talk about them today because they're what I call the exotics. Uh, but it's all down to the uh, the lenses, the quality of the glass that the lens has made, why eyepiece fluctuate in price so much. Okay, we've talked about the design of the eyepiece that you may or may, or may not have. Uh, and hopefully you're a little bit more familiar with it so far. Now that information is not greatly important. You don't, you know, I mean, have to know that. But it's good to know it, especially when you're maybe purchasing a new eyepiece. Because like I say, there's lots of them out there. And it might just say, oh, it's a Kellner design. Or it might be a Plossel design. Well, now you know what they're talking about. Right, we've talked about the letters on uh, eyepieces, so we now know what they mean. So what about numbers? Now, if you look, the, the most obvious thing is you'll see a number that is in millimeters. Now, this number will vary from around about three up to about 35, something like that. Um, uh, you probably have got an eyepiece round about 20, 25, and probably another one, probably two eyepieces were provided round about 10. They're the two common size eyepieces provided with telescopes today. Now, those numbers, the 10, let, let's go with 10, okay? Say you're holding a 10 millimeter eyepiece, and remember, this is going to work with whatever size of eyepiece. So, we're saying we've got a 10 millimeter eyepiece. Now, that number doesn't mean that, uh, because some people do get mistaken with binoculars. If you've heard about binoculars, they have two numbers on it. They may say 10 by 50. Now, the first number is how much it magnifies, and the second number means how, much the ob how big the objective lens is at the front. This doesn't apply to eyepiece. It doesn't mean that if it's got a 10 on, this magnifies 10 times. This is its focal length. It's a 10 millimeter focal length. Now this is important to know how much magnification it's going to give with your telescope or any, any telescope basically. For example, if I was to place this 10 millimeter, this 10 millimeter in this telescope, it would magnify different as if I placed the same eyepiece in this telescope. In this telescope, this 10 millimeter in this telescope will measure uh, will magnify 40 times. If I place this 10 millimeter in this telescope, the same eyepiece will magnify 90 times. Now, this isn't because this telescope's more powerful as such. It's this telescope has more focal length. It's the focal length that's going to give you more magnification. It's a bit of a misconception that telescopes magnify things. They don't. 
it's the eyepiece that actually magnifies things. Now to work this out with your telescope and any eyepiece is first you need to find out the focal length of your telescope. Now you'll usually find this on a sticker on the uh, around the focus or somewhere like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If it's not there, have a look at your uh, instruction manual, something like that. It'll not be hard to find out the focal length of your telescope. Now, once you've got that, whatever eyepiece you want to use, well, in our case here, we're using a 10. We take the focal length. Now, the focal length of this is 400 and simply divide it by the eyepiece that you want to use. So this is, in this case, 10. So uh, 400 divided by 10 is 40. So I now know that this 10 millimeter will magnify 40 times. Exactly the same bit of maths you do on this one. Uh, the focal length of this one is 900. Again, 900 divided by 10, 90. Now, of course, this will work with any telescope focal length and any eyepiece focal length. So now this is really useful to know because you know, you may be just looking through, uh, uh, reading up about something and it says, you know, the best magnif magnification to use is, say, 100 times. Well, you know, that's just numbers if you don't actually know what e eyepiece does to your telescope. Well, now you do. Now, on some eyepieces, there's actually another number on there uh, that has a degrees uh, symbol at, at the end of it. Now, what this um, is re representing is the field of view of the eyepiece. Now, the field of view is simply how much sky you can see around the target you're looking at. Um, think of it as if you stood at the very end of a very long tunnel, the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel would appear very, very small. This would be narrow field of view. Okay, and as you walk down the tunnel, it would get wider and wider and wider, and you would see more, or would appear to get wider and wider and wider, and you would see more and more. Uh, that would be classed as wide field of view. And uh, this is why, there, again, there's so many different types of uh, eyepieces, because each design will give you a slightly different uh, field of view. Now, in the astronomy world, uh, a narrow field of view is around about 30 to 40 degrees. Um, a pretty average middle of the road is around about 50, 52, and then anything above that we kind of class as a wider field of view or wide field of view. Now, uh, another thing to take into consideration with eyepieces, and something that's not always marked on the eyepiece, and it, but it will be in the spec sheet of the eyepiece, and that is something called eye relief. Now, eye relief is just simply how far you need to be from the eyepiece to get a viewing, uh, a comfortable viewing position. Now, again, down to design, this varies dramatically. Um, you know, uh, Plossels are slightly better than, uh, let's say, Kellners. Or, uh, you, you, do you see what I'm saying? And, and again, down to the lens design, you'll get better uh, eye relief. Now, it's important to check that you are getting the correct eye relief if you happen to wear, wear eyeglasses, especially if you've got to wear them permanently at the eyepiece, because you're probably already aware of, um, especially on the shorter focal length eyepieces, getting up to the eyepiece sometimes is almost impossible. And you're like looking through literally a straw because you can't get close enough. And that's down to short eye relief of the eyepiece. Um, you're pretty much going to guarantee a decent eye relief on eyepieces above 15 millimeters. Um, anything below that, the eye relief is going to start drop, you know, drop quite dramatically, um, unless you start paying, you know, start paying for it. Basically, they start getting expensive, you know, and this is where you know the better glass comes into the lens elements, and this is why we get expensive eyepieces because uh, they have great eye relief, and they probably, you know. Uh, only a nine millimeter or an eight millimeter short short focal length as where an eight millimeter plossel if you're wearing eyeglasses can is a bit of a struggle to get your you know to get to a comfortable uh, viewing position so something to take into consideration and just check the eye relief to make sure that it is going to suit your vision
Now, one final word on eyepieces, a question I often get asked, is will this particular eyepiece work with my telescope? And the answer, to be honest with you, 98% of the time, it will. Um, I've never um, used an eyepiece where it's not worked with a telescope. That's what they're designed for. They're designed to be used with telescopes, unless we're talking some specialised eyepiece, then maybe. But uh, as far as any of I've mentioned, the Kellners, the Modified Acumens and the Plossels, yes, they're going to work with whatever telescope you may happen to have. Well, I hope I've answered a few questions that you may have had about eyepieces. And, and I know I've not covered, there is many, many, many types of uh, more, many more types of uh, designs of eyepieces. But like I say, I just wanted to cover in this video what you would expect to get as your first eyepiece and uh, clear any of those queries that you might have. Uh, up so uh, you know next time you go to buy an eyepiece or next time you go under the night sky at least you've got a bit more confidence that you know what you're doing well that's about it for another one folks thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far don't forget hit that thumbs up button if you've enjoyed the video and maybe think about subscribing if you haven't subscribed already i do do regular uploads for the new astronomer in the meantime folks take good care of yourselves and i will see you on the next one Bye for now.